Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to today's webinar which is going to be on uh, Shaw's microphone catalog for, um, uh, for various applications. So we have the PGA stuff, SM, Beta, KSM and Classic. So we'll go through each of these mics, what they're meant for, who they're meant for and uh, uh, various applications and features of these microphones. So before we get started, uh, this is the view that you guys should be having either on your laptops or something similar on your phone. And uh, it just gives you an idea of what all to look out for on the screen. Main controls are to the right hand side, uh, which gives you an option to, um, uh, to chat with everyone, to ask questions. Uh, there is a polls section because we run polls uh, during the webinar. Uh, and at the bottom uh, below polls is question and answer. So if you have any questions, you can type in your questions there and we'll try our best to answer the questions at the end. Um, this is just to introduce myself. My name is Fali Damanya. I am market development manager for Pro Audio with uh, Sure South Asia. And with me moderating the session is Mr. Devraj Panikar and Devraj is market development manager for systems, also for South Asia. Um, let's get started with our wireless, our wired microphone portfolio. So as you can see, we've got um, uh, six categ categories uh, broadly distributed through the pro audio uh, world. PG Alta microphones are very accessible, as in price-wise, they are reasonably uh, priced. This is the starting price range for uh, Shure microphones, um, meant for you know daily usage, uh, home studios, rehearsal spaces, um, uh, small clubs, performance areas, uh, home recording uh, uh, studios. The SM microphones are, as you all must be aware, are industry standard professional microphones used for daily touring, clubs, and studio performances. The beta microphones are very application-specific microphones. They are engineered for reproduction in very fine details of the acoustic environment. So really, really high quality microphones you go here and very uh, catered, uh, dedicated to the touring and, and high performance studio market. KSM microphones, are Shure's premium microphones, uh, very refined, very sophisticated components that capture the world's most accomplished studio and live performances. Then we'll take a look at some of the classic microphones. So the classics are basically, you know, the old uh, microphones that you saw on uh, Elvis performances and the Beatles, etc. So we'll have a look at those microphones. And uh, the Motive um, uh, microphones, which we will actually look at in the next webinar, but these are more uh, catered to the digital and mobile, uh, the modern mobile digital environment. So they have a USB outputs that connect straight to the uh, computer or through your mobile phone. Now, before we get started, it's very important to find the right microphone. And here's a brief explanation of the microphone characteristics that will help you select a microphone that meets your demands at that, and that also sounds, captures the correct sound for you, okay? The operating principle of uh, how a microphone works, there are two. Uh, broadly, there are two. One is dynamic and the other is condenser. Dynamics are very simple in design. Uh, and where they um, excel is that they are built to be very rugged and they can uh, handle extreme volume levels without any distortion. Condenser microphones, on the other hand, tend to be lighter in weight, very sensitive as far as the diaphragm goes, and they are precise and very smooth in what they capture as far as the nuances um, of the uh, performance. Um, Broadly, they are phantom powered, but there are some products which also can be powered by a battery. Another quick look at the microphone polar patterns, and I'm sure most of you all uh, on today's webinar would be aware of these, so we'll go through them uh, fairly quick. Uh, omnidirectional is a polar pattern which captures from all, um, 
all sides. So front, back, top, left, all directions of the mic captures the same amount of sound. Bidirectional captures in opposite directions. Uh, cardioid is the typical polar pattern that we use day in and day out. So, you know, SM58, SM57 are all cardioid. Uh, the low bar polar pattern has the highest possible directivity. So it's uh, generally the uh, polar pattern that you find in shotguns. So, uh, you know, shotguns that are used for audience pickup, that are used for um, things like um, um, a broadcast, those are all shotgun mics, and that's a low bar polar pattern. Then we have a look at supercardioid, hypercardioid. Super and hyper basically capture from the front. They're more directional in the front, but they also have a little pickup at the rear of the mic. So uh, this tends to be very useful in noisy environments uh, and also can be useful in you know, placing your stage monitors according to the uh, polar pattern of the mic. So supercardioids give you a little more rejection towards the sides, but they have a slight pickup from the rear. So this is both supercardioid and hypercardioid. You'll need to be careful about this uh, feature. Then we have the half cardioid uh, uh, pickup, which is picks up most of the sound from above, um, uh, and they're usually flat mounted microphones. So a microphone, um, uh, and the last one we have is sub cardioid, and this is for use generally on quieter stages, especially where bleed um, uh, and ambience enhancement of the overall sonic performance is required. Okay, there's also a toroidal pattern, and the toroidal pattern I haven't mentioned here because uh, at the moment, none of our professional category microphones come with a toroidal pattern, but to visualize it, um, it looks like a donut. And the toroidal pattern is very pop is uh, used mostly in the uh, corporate uh, sector. Uh, that's where toroidal uh, uh, polar pattern stuff is used. Okay, next we'll have a quick look at the microphone frequency response. Um, generally, there are three types of uh, responses. Um, uh, a flat frequency response, um, tailored, which is more towards, uh, um, which is more towards like singers, you know, where you get that little, um, uh, uh, so you get that little peak in the highs that makes the voice a little more clear when the performer is performing. And you get an adjustable. There are some microphones which allow you to, you know, tailor the frequency response. Uh, some of them, like uh, you can change the caps, so the cap changes the high frequency response. Some of them you can change the, like you know, the low pass, how much lows are let into the microphone. So broadly, into these three categories is uh, where they are divided. First, we'll have a look at the PG Alta series. Um, these are our entry-level wired microphones. Very simple, um, simple solutions, and they meet simple day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, uh, requirements. Uh, they still, although they come in at a entry-level uh, price, so to say, they still have Shaw's legendary quality uh, at a very accessible price point. This is very important to uh, to remember. And most of these mics, they share the same. Uh, sonic signature of the SM series, but at a, just a slightly lower price point. That's very important to remember. They're great for your first, you know, professional microphone. If you're a, you know, a flautist, a tabla player, a percussion player, um, you know, you want a microphone to start out with, but that is not uh, crazy expensive. Uh, the PG Alta microphones are, are definitely the mic to go for. And all of them have a cardioid polar pattern. I've broken this, uh, these uh, uh, webinar into um, microphones as per applications. So starting with uh, vocal, as we know in most of our live sound environments, the vocal tends to be the most uh, important. But let's start with vocal. First we have the PGA27, which is a large diaphragm side address cardioid condenser microphone. Great for vocals and instrument recordings. 
Uh, the frequency response of this is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And there are a few variations on this where you can get it with the cable or without a cable. Next, we have the PGA48 and the PGA58. 48, again, great for, you know, home applications, stuff even like uh, um, karaoke. A lot of people that use the PGA48 for karaoke. Uh, frequency response is about 70 hertz to 15, 15 and a half kilohertz. Um, the PGA58 is the direct now uh, descendant in the PG series as far as the SM58 goes, baby. Think about it like the baby brother of the SM58. So really professional quality microphone, ideal for lead and backing, uh, backing uh, vocal performances. And next is a PGA31, which is uh, the headset microphone for the PGA series. Okay, um, is the one thing to note about the PGA31, and you know most professional uh, headphone microphones, uh, in a general sense, tend to be omni. The problem with that is it picks up too much stage sound, too much PA sound, and you don't get enough uh, gain before feedback. That's where the PGA31 and similar microphones in the SM category come in because they are cardioid. So you actually pick up only what's in front of the microphone and it rejects a lot of the sound from, you know, from um, uh, stage bleed and PA bleed, etc. As far as the instruments go, we have a PGA57, the PGA81, PGA181, and the PGA98H. Um, PGA57, just like the SM57, great on guitar amp, on brass, on instruments like saxophone, trumpets, horns, anything that requires a really high um, uh, capture of an extremely high uh, SPL. The PGA1, uh, PGA81, great for strings, outstanding for uh, overhead microphones, for cymbals, anything that requires a little shimmer where you have to capture that top end shimmer, the PGA81 is, uh, out, works outstanding in that uh, case. The PGA181 is a side address microphone, which means it does not pick up uh, from a typical, like how a typical microphone does, it picks up from the side. So where this comes in beneficial is if you don't have sometimes enough place to put a standard microphone, you can actually use the PGA181 because it actually, the, the cartridge and the because of how you have to position it, it takes much less uh, space. And a really good application for the PGA-181 is in a drum set at the snare drum, because very often there are a lot of, um, you know, cymbal stands and hi-hat stands and snare one, snare two, et cetera, and there's not enough place to fit like an SM57. Um, in most cases over there, you'd go with a side address like a PGA-181. The PGA-98H is, um, um, uh, is meant for used as a clip-on microphone with uh, uh, wind instruments. So, you know, brass, saxophones, uh, trumpets, trombones. Also, you can use it on strings. So if you clip, use a little press clip and you can clip it onto a violin and just uh, uh, move the, uh, the holder of it uh, in position to capture the instrument, uh, to capture the uh, strings instrument correctly. It works actually great on uh, on cello, by the way, really, really good on cello. Let me go to everyone's favorite drums. So here we've got the PGA 52, 56, 98D, and the last is a PGA drum kit set where you can buy a whole bunch of uh, PG microphones in enough to uh, have enough microphones for an entire drum set. So the PGA 52 um, meant primarily for kick drum, bass guitar amplifiers uh, in the Indian instrument scenario, so like low duffs. Um, I've even tried it once on a, you know, a, a buyer of a tabla. Um, it gets a little more, you know, bottom end and body on the buyer. Really, sound, and in my opinion, I think it actually sounds better than just having like a single SM58 on the microphone, on the, on the, on the tabla. You have a PGA52 on the buyer and you have like a 57 or like a Beta 98 or a PGA 98 on the on the charty side. That combination works uh, really well. Um, next is the PGA 56, uh, which actually comes with a clamp. So you can clamp it onto your snare drum, top, bottom, the, you can clamp it onto the toms. 
um, uh, any the clamp fits onto any kind of uh, percussion instrument, so congas, timbales, uh, it's meant. That's the primary application of it. Um, the other thing uh, to remember with all these microphones is their SPL handling capability is pretty high. You can actually put them in extremely loud scenarios, uh, and uh, you know you don't have to really worry about distortion of the cartridge or you know damage to the cartridge. And that actually goes uh, uh, to say for pretty much all of Shure's uh, professional audio uh, microphone catalog. That's pretty true for all of them. Let me have a look at the PG PGA 98D, which, uh, as it suggests, is for drums. This comes again with its own kind of clamp. Uh, this is a uh, condenser microphone, and uh, so basically the pickup is a little more sensitive. Um, again, snare drum, rack toms, percussions, etc. What I like uh, to an extent, I think, about the PGA stuff is you see most of these are high passed, uh, you know, uh, 30 hertz, uh, 50 hertz, and 60 hertz. A lot of this takes care of the fact that you don't need to, um, you know, uh, high pass uh, later. You know, um, this high, internal high pass of the microphone itself does a lot of the work for you. Uh, and that's something that I actually prefer. I, I prefer not to do that high pass. Uh, I prefer not to do too much EQ post. I like the mic to just do the capture of what I want uh, uh, correctly. So this is the seven piece uh, drum kit set. So it comes with uh, basically all the clamps, the mics, a uh, pair of overhead mics, the uh, PJ57, 56, 52. Uh, comes in a nice little carrying case, and it's not too pricey, so it's good for you know you want to start out for your studio. Uh, uh, we've in fact given it to a couple of uh, audio schools over here, um, and uh, we've got some feedback from them that it actually sounds much. Uh, you wouldn't expect it to sound as good as it does, and it actually sounds pretty good for the price of the entire kit. So that's the seven-piece uh, drum kit set uh, of the PG Alta series. So again, who are the customers for PG Alta? Home studios, garage bands, lower tier, you know, clubs, performance venues um, that have, you know, nightly band or uh, karaoke setups, um, institutional or non-musical kind of places, and places that, you know, don't necessarily have, um, in, have uh, budgets to spend on, like, you know, a, a cupboard full of, uh, you know, super expensive microphones. So this is basically uh, where the PG Alta, uh, uh, the customers for the PG Alta basically are these. Now we'll take a look at the SM microphones, everyone's favorite. Uh, SM, by the way, sound, uh, stands for Shaw Microphone. So this is the range of the SM microphones, um, designed for daily use. Synonymous with quality, uh, part of the series is the legendary SM57, SM58. I should add also the SM81. Durability, reliability make them pretty much the best sellers uh, in, the, in the industry. You won't find a sound rental company or a studio in the world that does not own at least one of these three microphones. They will own at least one SM58, at least one SM57, and at least one SM81. Uh, it'll be I'd I'd be very surprised if there was a studio that didn't own at least one of these three microphones. They now use the famous um, and the the reason the Shure uh, SM57 and 58 became so popular is their Unidyne cartridge, um, and it would be uh, pretty uh, uh, sure to say that most dynamic microphones which were produced. Uh, all take their design from the Unidyne cartridge introduced by Shaw. You see them, you see that cartridge in the 57, the 58, and the SM7B. And basically every, almost any dynamic microphone that is available today takes its design based off this Unidyne cartridge. Um, all these, uh, the entire range, they're also uh, cardioid in polar pattern. Now, this is the, if you go to see a basic frequency response, if you follow this, uh, this bluish line, that is the frequency response of the Shure SM58. Yeah, and basically, as you can see, all the other microphones um, 
basically deliver a similar frequency response and that's because the cartridge design is inspired from the Shure Unidyne, uh, Unidyne cartridge. Uh, the shape is all is pretty much a similar and like the slide says that's because Shure was the one that uh, was the one that invented it. Why are the SM series the safest choice to go with? Well, because they are mechanically and acoustically and physically, uh, I would say the best in the business and the most reliable. Um, uh, and it's the one common factor, uh, regardless of who the artist is, what the environment is, and what the application is. Um, I have some stories from uh, our touring days when you know, we'd have uh, DJs dunk a uh, SM58 into a glass of, uh, of um, you know, soda and, you know, pull it back out, shake the soda off, shake the liquid off and start talking and it'll continue to work. I mean, that's the SM58 basically for you. So again, let's start with uh, the vocal range. First, we have the SM27, multipurpose, large diaphragm, uh, cardioid condenser microphone, excellent for stage and studio. And I should now mention that uh, there are some really famous drummers. I'm not going to mention them here, but um, if you guys email us later, I will send out an email to let you know who these guys are. And uh, they basically rely on the SM27 for their entire drum kit. Um, there's one video with a very famous drummer. He's got about nine SM27s on nine of his toms. So each one has an SM27. That's his setup for the studio, and it's the same setup for his live uh, live shows. It's an incredible, incredible microphone. The SM48, again, a, a rugged microphone. Main applications is speech, karaoke applications. You know, so you know, slightly better than the PGA version of it. Um, you know, backing vocals, etc., and a little slightly tighter. Um, uh, frequency response so 55k to around 14 odd kilohertz is is uh, for this sm48 the sm58 i don't need to tell you guys anything about this lead vocals backing vocals harmonica um, again at the bottom here uh, you get them in slightly various uh, versions um, yeah you guys everyone knows about the sm58 um, the sm86 87a now this is a condenser version of the of the of the microphone. It's not too commonly seen uh, anymore. Um, I'm not uh, too sure why, but it's uh, I used to have. There used to be a couple of sound vendors in um, the, in India and some of them abroad that used to have this SM86, and I used to quite like it, especially on my lead vocal. Really, really nice. Although and although it is a condenser, for some reason I never found it extra sensitive. Like I could, I could push the mic quite a bit until it started. Uh, you know, the gain before feedback on this microphone was always uh, excellent. Um, yeah, so that's the SM86 for you. And now we go to the head-worn range. So the SM31, the SM35, SM57 again that I don't need to introduce. And last but not least, the SM81. Um, I've known engineers abroad to use the SM81 to actually hammer in nails on the stage it is so well built um, you know you can throw it off a stage throw it off the first I wouldn't recommend it but throw it off a first floor of your building and it would still the chances of it um, you know, chances of you picking it up and making it work would be uh, pretty high so yeah the SM31 again the thing to notice over here is the polar pattern you know all cardioid okay um, so um, extremely rugged use. This one is actually meant, uh, has a little more moisture resistance, so it's meant for a lot of active uh, wear. So it's like, um, you know, uh, uh, dancers for, um, you know, uh, excuse me, dancers, um, you know, fitness enthusiasts, everywhere where you require a little, you know, the sweat to be, um, um, to not like affect the speech or the microphone. The SM30H31FH uh, is the microphone for you. SM35, again, a legendary uh, head-worn microphone, outstanding for lead vocals. There are a lot of, of uh, musicians, a lot of singers uh, that I know of, even in India, flautists also, that use the SM35 uh, for their flute and for singing. Very, very popular microphone. SM57, I'm not going to spend too much time. Everyone knows this microphone. You can pretty much put the SM57 on probably any instrument on the planet 
uh, and it would kind of work for you. And just a little <clears throat> trivial fact, um, the SM57 is the mic of choice for anything to do with uh, the presidential stuff in the USA. So when um, when we had uh, you know the um, occasion of the opening of the um, the um, uh, stadium in uh, in Ahmedabad, that was the SM57 was actually the mic that was being used by the presidents. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's a it it looks from a distance. Say, yeah, what is that mic? But actually, it's an SM57. Uh, the SM81. Again, I think I've been using. I've been personally, as an engineer, been using this mic for ever since I started. Um, you can again put this on pretty much uh, any uh, instrument out there, and uh, you know it's it's just an outstanding, outstanding microphone. Um, the thing with the SM81, and that not many people are aware of, is actually the frequency response. That it is a 20 hertz to a 20 kilohertz frequency response, and you can pick up some pretty a uh, decent amount of low frequency from the SM81, especially on things like acoustic guitar or acoustic bass, the SM81 cello, in fact, also. The SM81 works uh, works uh, brilliantly. Uh, the SM94, in fact, and the SM137, SM7B, the reason I put the 94 here, yes, it is a discontinued microphone, but I think in the SM range, it was always one of my favorites. So. For any of you guys, if you find a used SM94 anywhere, please pick it up. And if you don't want it, let me know. I'll take it from you. The SM94 is probably one of my favorite microphones in this SM category. Um, uh, reasonably priced, and uh, but just there was something about it that made it sound uh, uh, sound outstanding. <clears throat> SM87, again, it's a condenser microphone, uh, full frequency response, a great for you know various instruments, uh, very commonly used on on percussion. In fact, so um, uh, you know, like congas, etc., with the A56D clamp. You put the clamp on the timbales on the congas, and then the SM137 used to be quite common. Um, my, I wouldn't, I shouldn't even say mine. The all-time podcaster's favorite, the radio jockey favorite at the moment, without any comparison, is the SM7B. Uh, this is probably one of the most, along with the SM57 and the SM58, probably the most legendary microphone uh, out there from sure, the SM7B. Uh, it has a selectable frequency response. It de uh, the mic delivers a very warm and smooth audio reproduction in very close proximity applications. So you can actually get really close to the mic and speak into it. And um, you know, it, it just, it just, you've probably not heard a mic. If you've not tried this mic out, you've not heard a mic that sounds anything like this uh, microphone. So who are the SMCast customers? Tours, venues, so concert tours, concert venues, um, uh, gar again, garage bands, recording studios, um, institutions, musical or non-musical, big or small studio or stage, you know, uh, I mean, Suffice to say that if you see anything uh, on TV or broadcast, if it has to do with music, the chances of you seeing an SM58 or an SM57 in that are pretty, pretty high. Um, so, and they're uh, like all show microphones, they're super well known for their outstanding reliability and great sound in pretty much any, any circumstance, any situation. Next, we're going to have a look at the beta series of microphones. So the beta microphones were specifically designed for solutions to do with live uh, live uh, performances. Uh, they were designed to survive the rigors of uh, the rigors of you know being on the on the road, being used every day, being you know dropped from a case, being dropped on the stage, and you know you pretty much pick it up and it continues to work. That's what they were designed for. Very very high specification in far, as far as the the design uh, element of the microphones. Most of them, if I'm not mistaken, all of them are super cardioid in pattern, with the exception of a few which I'll go through later. Um, they're all super cardioid. So again, super cardioid generally tend to be the go-to choice when it comes to performing uh, large-scale performances. So super cardioid uh, microphones that you generally go for. Uh, they have a neodymium uh, dynamic cartridge. Again, the benefit of this is that um, they they tend to be a little more sensitive. 
but also they can take in um, really super high levels of uh, of uh, volume you know without a problem uh, at all um they are lighter in weight uh, and they do provide a slightly higher output you know volume wise uh, output let's start again with the vocals one of again the all time favorites the beta 58a for anyone out there that finds like an sm58 to an extent maybe not enough presence the go to is the beta 58 that's the go to mic um when you see the beta 87 there are two options the 87a and the 87c they look pretty similar but if you actually look closer at the grill uh, the frequency response the polar pattern is uh, printed on it so that's how you can make out also uh, the name and the and the polar pattern is mentioned there um the difference between them is the a is a super cardioid condenser version and the c is a cardioid condenser version so basically uh, you know the thing with shore is they have pretty much a microphone at all price points and uh, various um, options you know even at the same price point so you can have the same version in a cardioid you can have the same version in super cardioid uh, and mostly all these microphones are tailored for the live performance uh, arena uh just a side note if you guys have not tried a uh, beta 87c on flute please try it out it's probably one of the best flute microphones out there next we have a look at uh, instruments slash drum microphones so the beta 27 52a 56a um the beta 27 is now like the big brother of the sm27 again super versatile as you can see now the frequency response is uh full frequency response again pop it on pretty much any instrument from uh um, you know drums to um you know uh, toms to snare drum uh and you might think yes yeah, snare drum condenser mic large diaphragm yes it's actually very very common to use this beta 27 on a snare drum very very common in fact um yep everyone's favorite uh, kick drum mic beta 50 or at least mine beta 52a uh again you'd be hard pressed to find anything other than a beta 52 or a beta 91 on uh, on kick drums or pretty much uh, drums and drummers from any 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 part of the world um again very important note that the super that the beta 52a is a super cardioid dynamic microphone okay uh the beta 56a uh generally used for toms along with the A56D clamp and uh, another very popular use for the beta 56A is actually for as a drum drummer's uh, microphone uh, because of how small it is uh, you know it it takes up very little space on the stand when the stand is moving in front of the drummer and then he has to move it out so the beta 56A is very very common as a a drum vocal microphone um and if you want an example then uh, the drummer from Motley Crue Tommy Lee that's one of the main guys that always uh, you'll always see a beta 56a as his vocal as his vocal mic and again because the part, uh, the pattern is so tight it kind of uh, if you get the angle correctly it rejects a lot of the drum uh, bleed and the drum pickup so it you kind of have it on the stand from the top and you angle the mic towards the mouth of the performer that way the uh, you know you get maximum pick up by the mic and also the maximum amount of rejection so rejection of all the cymbals and you know under the noise uh, around the drum set uh the beta 57a yes is the super cardioid version of the um um uh, of the uh, sm57 <clears throat> again it's a design so a little more sensitive than the sm57 and uh, uh used again for it's very common in fact to use it on bass guitar amplifiers um because you capture a very good sonic character with a decent amount of top end you with the beta 57a now next everyone's favorite mine included the beta 91a uh, uh this is a little uh, not many people know that yes this is the beta 91 but this cartridge which is actually this cartridge the beta 98 is actually the cartridge that drives the beta 91 yes 
So the Pita 98 is famous for, you know, these are all the versions of them. So any form of percussion to saxophone, they're all different versions over here meant for different applications. Um, but uh, yes, it's basically this cartridge that actually drives this microphone. And what I'm going to do is once we get done with this presentation, I'm going to actually open up my Beta 91 and, you know, just show you how that cartridge is placed. It's unbelievable that something so tiny uh, can get you so much low frequency. I mean, the mic speaks for itself, so I'll, I'll show you that uh, in a bit. Then another version of the Beta 98 is the 8C version, the AMP version, and the S version. Now, one thing I want to point out, yes, I'm pretty sure most of you all have used these microphones, but there's one misconception and that a lot of people use this HC version for instruments other than woodwinds, other than what is mentioned here. And uh, the correct microphone, in fact, to use, let me go back, is the Beta 98S version or the DS version. Okay, um, that is the correct uh, microphone to be used. Um, uh, the reason being that these don't have as high of a SPL handling capacity as uh, the Beta 98S version. Okay, the AMP version is also similar, but it just comes with the gooseneck and the preamp attached. So um, most um, rock and metal bands across the world, you will always see the Beta 98 AMP on their drum kit. Now this is a very special microphone, which uh, is called the Beta 181. And it actually comes with a little preamp here. And you can choose the capsule that you want to sit on top of the preamp. So there are four types of capsules. There's a cardioid, bidirectional, supercardioid, and omni. So you basically just unscrew the top uh, cartridge and you can just replace it with a different cartridge. Um, and that actually makes this mic very, very, uh, very versatile because you can just, you know, you're not stuck with a mic just with a cardioid pattern. If you feel like you want the same mic, you like the sound signature, but you wished it was Omni, great. You can just go and buy the Omni directional uh, cart, uh, capsule and fit it onto the same uh, preamp. So this is also one of my, um, and most engineers, a lot of uh, engineers use this uh, microphone. Very common to be used as room mics. Very common to be used on, you know, again, a lot of percussive kind of stuff. Acoustic guitar also, great microphone for that. So who are the beta customers? Uh, touring acts, venues, large or small, rental houses, uh, major production and recording studios. They're designed to survive the rigors of life on the road. Uh, that's very important because, I mean, they're really built like like tanks, uh, the chances of you know damaging a beta or even an SM microphone for that matter is you'll have to do some serious damage to it in order to get it to not work. Um, primary stage mics, they are, they're primary stage mics, they have become uh, favorites in the studio environment. The 52, 91, 56, 57 are, are pretty much industry standard at the moment. Super popular with live sound engineers, most of them uh, just buy their own so that they don't have to risk maybe not getting them at an event. Um, very consistent manufacturing and very tight on the tolerances. This is very important because if you buy a beta microphone today or an SM today and you buy it maybe 10 years down the line, you still want it to sound the same. Uh, you want the polar pattern as close as possible. Yes, the mic will require a little breaking in, but beyond that, you know, it has to sound, uh, has to sound the same. Okay. And they also go through a decent amount of environmental testing, um, which is basically because they're meant for outdoor things. Uh, you're exposed to a lot of environmental conditions. Uh, let's have a quick look at the KSMs, and then we'll get into the classics and some demos. So the KSM microphones, uh, premium, very refined, super sophisticated microphones, uh, probably the best microphones that are made uh, regardless of the cost. Um, the highest performance possible out there and very extremely, extremely premium components. Um, all time favorite at the moment, basically what the, you could say what the SM58 used to be is the KSM8 uh, today. Um, absolutely revolutionary design. It is a dual diaphragm uh, microphone. And if we have time, I'll actually open up the diaphragm and let you have a look at it. 
uh, the main reason this mic became so popular, firstly, of course, because of the sound, but secondly, um, because of the dual diaphragm, proximity effect is not so much of a problem. Proximity effect is basically when you bring the mic really close to your mouth and then you start hearing a lot of boomy noise and basically you've got to high pass the mic in order to get rid of that. Then we have a look at the KSM-9, which is the first dual diaphragm microphone for live, but it's a condenser microphone. Yeah. And they come in two versions uh, whereby you can switch. There's an internal switch of the polar pattern. I don't know if you can see this too clearly here, but this there's a switch here that allows you to change the polar pattern. So in this one, you can change it from subcardioid to hypercardioid. And over here, you can change it from cardioid to supercardioid. Now that's like a game changer when it comes to live performance microphones that you can change the uh, polar pattern of your wired microphone on the spot, you know, based on your on your application. Um, a very popular mic also in the studio fraternity for especially for strings and for studio vocals is the KSM 42. Um, uh, outstanding microphone for capturing really smooth uh, vocals and also where you don't get too much proximity effect. So you can come really close to the mic and talk into it. And you know it does not get boomy and you know bassy and stuff like that. So I really, really love this microphone. And these are other versions also of the KSM. So we have the KSM 44A, the KSM 32, probably the all-time favorite for cymbals and overheads is the KSM 32, and the KSM 137. Now, um, um, thing to remember with most of the KSM microphones is a lot of them are interchangeable. Uh, so you can use a 32 where you could use a 44. You could use a 42 where you could use a 32. Um, um, so that most of them are quite interchangeable. They're just at slightly different price points and slight different uh, features. But for most part, you can interchange between these microphones. The sound signature is uh, is um, is uh, outstandingly similar. The KSM 137, in fact, interestingly, is very popular for choirs. So there are a bunch of choirs, even in India, uh, that use the KM, KSM-137 as their primary capture. So it's about four or six KSM-137s in front of the choir, and that captures uh, most, that does most of the work of uh, capturing the choir. So they don't use individual mics for everyone. They just use four, I believe it's six KSM-137s. Uh, um, so now the KSM-141, the 313, and Honestly, my favorite, the the, uh, the the 353, and the 353 is one of the microphones I'm going to demo uh, after this. Um, the KSM-141 uh, basically gives you a few more features where uh, you can adjust the high pass, low pass, and you can adjust the gain to an extent. Uh, there are a few settings for that. Again, full frequency response, condenser microphones uh, are great uh, for cello. In, in the world of orchestration, probably my favorite mic for miking um, uh, cello and double bass and instruments like that. The KSM-313 has now, um, the 313 and the 353 are now dynamic, but they are ribbon microphones. And it's a new uh, ribbon technology. Uh, the, the material of the ribbon is rosolite. And rosolite has the feature of most, if you go to see most ribbon mics tend to be very delicate these guys can handle a serious amount of input power. So you can put them in front of like kick drums, bass guitar amps, absolutely no problem. Yep. Uh, who are the KSM customers? Large scale tours, high tier venues, high end recording studios, found in high end studios and stages. Uh, as you can see a picture here of uh, the 353 capturing a double bass. And uh, you know the 313 capturing guitar amps. It's probably the most favorite uh, uh, guitar microphone uh, at the moment in the world. Have a quick look at the classic collection. Uh, you know, classic microphones, just like you probably saw back in the day. Uh, pretty much every famous Hollywood movie, Bollywood movie. If there's a music scene, you've probably seen um, the Super 55 there as part of the microphone that they're using. Um, so firstly, we have the Super 55, uh, the SH version, and the uh, 565. So the 565 is basically a retroish um, SM58, 
slightly different uh, frequency response over here. Um, and it has a little stronger pop filter into it. So uh, overall, it's a little, I'd say, um, resistant, little more resistant to pops. Okay, the, also the nice thing is it has a selectable impedance, resp um, dual impedance, as in you can, you have access to change the impedance of the microphone, which is very important. Yeah, um, and you have the very, very famous harmonica microphone, the 520DX and the 545, which is like a, a retro SM57 kind of microphone. Um, um, also selectable uh, impedances on these. Uh, the 520DX is, as you can see from the frequency response, 100 hertz to 5 kilohertz. It gives you that honky, nasally, uh, you know, that typical uh, honky tonk, uh, blues, harmonica kind of sound. Uh, very often, if you have bands that use like a radio effect in their in their live shows or something, it's uh, very often this 520DX. It's very very common. Then this is uh, Super 55. The, uh, the black version, uh, is, I believe, is not available anymore. It's, uh, but if enough people want them, I guess they could probably bring that back. This is a special version made for James Headfield from Metallica. So it's black, but the the foam on the inside is uh, red in color. And it's a special India version which we made for India. So um, uh, even if anyone wants customization of any of these mics. These can be now, to an extent, done in uh, in uh, in India. Okay, so before we go to questions, I'm going to get into doing some demos. So give me a few seconds, uh, just stand by. I'm going to turn on my camera, and then we'll check out some of the microphones. Hey, 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 check, 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 hey. All right, so I hope you guys can hear that. And... Yeah, we can uh, hear you fully, David. Can you hear me? Okay, and so now what I'm checking out first is the 353. So this is the ribbon microphone. Turn up the gain, match the gain a little bit. So yeah, hey, hey, one, two, check, check, one, two. Hey, one, two, one, two. Just remember it's ribbon, so you don't, it's actually a dynamic. You don't require phantom power or anything like that. Um, and but the good thing is because of how strong the ribbon is, you can actually turn on phantom power and you won't damage it. Whereas most other ribbon microphones, <clears throat> you blast them with phantom power and you can say thank you and good night to that ribbon microphone. Yeah, so this is the 353. Three. Yeah, yeah, one, two. <clears throat> Now we're going to check everyone's favorite, uh, the Beta 58. Hey, 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 check one, two, hey, hey, one, two, yes, one, two, hey, hey, one, two, yeah, one, two, check. And now I'm going to check out the, the uh, KSM 8 for you. Hey, hey, one, two, yes, one, two, hey, hey, one, two, yes, one, two, KSM 8. I will check these out now in a little more succession. So let's start with the, start with the 353. <clears throat> hey, hey, one, two, hey, one, two, KSM 353 Roswellite ribbon microphone. Check one, two. Hey, hey, one, two. This is the beta 58. Hey, hey, one, two. One, two, hey, hey. And this is now the KSM 8. Hey, hey, one, two. Check one, two. KSM 8 dual cartridge microphone. Hey, hey, one, two, yes. Um, I think we have a little time, so I'm just going to show you the cartridge of this microphone. I'll have to turn it off for that, so just stand by. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk into this mic while I show it to you. So you, you know, have a look at this. So you see that little space below? There's actually one cartridge at the top there, and there's another one at the bottom there, and uh, that's what actually creates the uh, creates the um, the uh, feeling of not the feeling actually the the process of uh, very low proximity proximity effect. Um, as you know, with like most um, um, uh, cardioid uh, microphones, the moment you hold them up very close to your mouth and sing, you get a lot of uh, low end boominess, which you have to high pass quite a bit, and you don't get that effect with the KSM um, KSM eight. Hey, hey, one, two, hey, hey, one, two, hey, hey. So that's the KSM eight for you. And now, real quick, I'm going to show you the Beta 91. Give me a second. Yep. So, if you pull out the grill of the Beta 91, and then you just, uh, yeah, and then you just pull off this uh, little foam that protects it, uh, dearly hope this mic works after this demo. <laughs> I'm sure it will. So have a look at that. That's now the Beta 98 cartridge in the, this little device down here. So that's actually what is picking up and making this ginormous, you know, uh, kick drum uh, sound. Basically, that's the that's the that's the microphone. Okay. And also, uh, just for your information, like the this um, uh, 91 was actually not intentionally designed as a kick drum mic. It was designed uh, to be a boundary mic for theater. So you keep it at the edge of the stage, and then it picks up the performances. That's where it started. Um, but then it, you know, suddenly became very prominent as a kick drum uh, microphone. And you know, uh, you'll be hard pressed to find anyone that does not use this microphone uh, in their kick drums. Um, so cool, yeah. I'm gonna turn off this camera, um, and then we will go to some uh, question and answers. In fact, the the camera's on. That's fine. Uh, let's take some questions, Devraj. Cool. So we have a bunch of questions here. A great attendance today, nice. Ali. Uh, I hope I can so, answer them. Uh, yeah, uh, I think most of them you should be. So uh, okay, I'm going. I'm going by first come first serve. So uh, first question from Mr. Ravichandran is, uh, which would be the best stage performance microphone uh, for vocals? See, um, if um, see, there are a couple of ways to answer that. Number one is um, depends on the style of singing. Now. For most practical cases, you can put an SM58 or an SM57 on pretty much any singer in the world, and you'd be fine. Now, if you've worked with that singer a little bit and you know what kind of voice they have, now, supposing they have a very boomy voice, like a big male voice, then I would go with the, with the, you know, the KSM8. Um, but if that's not the case, then you could still use, like, you know, a, a Beta 58. Um, if you want a little shimmer, in the voice, then you can actually use the KSM9. Um, you know, so it, it entirely depends on uh, for most of the uses these days, like we're seeing this KSM8 uh, has become very, very popular. Um, uh, and I mean, even for me, it's one of my favorite microphones to use uh, on stage. Cool. Uh, so next question uh, is, where can uh, SM7B be used? Is a question from Mr. Harry. Oh, Mr. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, an SM7B. I mean, um, if you've heard like most of the rock and metal vocals that have a lot of growling and screaming in them, the chances of those vocals being recorded on SM7B is very high. Um, in India, I know a few bands. Uh, a lot of the rock and metal community have recorded on the SM7B. A lot of the podcasters, vloggers, radio jockeys um, use the SM7B. Um, another place, in fact, the, a few days back when I was speaking to um, this engineer who mixes for Iron Maiden, uh, he in fact told me that they use the SM7B on uh, the bass guitar uh, cabinet for the bass guitar player of, uh, of Iron Maiden. So um, I found that outstanding. So this is, I mean, pretty much you can use it 
again pretty much anywhere you want there's very little proximity effect so you know git i've known it to be used on guitar cabinets and stuff as well so it's it's just a very high quality dynamic uh, flat frequency microphone cool uh moving on to the next question from mr gulam mohammad adnan <clears throat> he's asking apart from the windshield what difference does the shor sm57 have from the sm58 um predominantly it's the same microphone actually um and it's just the the grill to an extent gives the microphone a slightly different character that's actually the difference um the the other reason for that is basically if you consider for a second show you so if i oops so if i show you this grill i'll try and take it out and turn it out yeah <clears throat> so you see if you use a 57 and now consider that this is a 57 if i speak on it i'm speaking on it very close okay uh and i'll in fact demo it to you on the microphone itself hey 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 so this is how it would probably sound if i was talking exactly what kind of on an sm57 again just remember the grill is not there and you can see my voice now how bassy and boomy it has become so now i'm going to put the grill on hey 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 now listen yeah so it's it's um sorry um uh, now listen to the sound so now it's um um you know it does now introduce a little space between the diaphragm and between your mouth because of the grill and that's what gives the 58 actually its um, its sound uh, but most uh, retro rock and roll guys if i'm not mistaken even the uh, pink floyd guys in fact the singers um, on pink floyd were all on sm57s um with uh, with uh, pop filters on them so that was a pretty standard situation back then um it's still a very common in fact to use an sm57 on vocals a lot of rock guys prefer using the 57 with a with a pop filter as opposed to the the 58 it's 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 very very common excellent uh moving on to the next question from mr pintu he's asking how to reduce the pop sound from vocal uh, without applying high pass filter uh no other option <laughs> either either hold the mic mic a little further away or you have to high pass there's no there's no option and i can give you an example here so if i'm really close to this microphone you can now hear this you can hear the popping for the moment i go back hey 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 now my voice is much cleaner so if i do this it's not as relevant as doing this hey hey so without using high pass filter um it's very difficult you need to use a high pass filter or if you have if you are in a studio a pop filter you need to use it so i think there's a great question uh so uh, next question from again from mr gulam mohammad adnan is uh what difference does the selectable impedance make so it will basically change the sensitivity of the mic um so think of it like um how do i explain this if you're familiar with uh, let's say ohms law okay which is the relationship of um, of current to voltage to resistance so you're basically changing the resistance of the microphone to an extent so if you change the resistance that basically changes the sensitivity of the of the microphone cool uh next question from mr vinay daswani is would you use a beta 57 on the snare drum as opposed to an sm 57 yeah whatever works because if you have a snare drum that's a little dull sounding you know especially the old uh, rock and roll snares you know the big um, you know 6 inch 7 inch 8 inch snares um you definitely go with the beta 57 there because the it's a little brighter uh but you need to be careful about the beta 57 because it's super cardioid so if you position it badly and now it starts picking up hats hi hats you can't blame the mic because you positioned it wrong so you need to get it out of the way of the um of the hi hats 
and um, it does great because then you don't need to like EQ it too much because it does the natural high boost kind of for you. It's on the mic itself. Cool. Uh, next, uh, there are a couple of questions from Mr. X Y Z. Uh, one is about oh. the, <clears throat> I think, a part availability. As first question is from where we can get the grills for the 58s and the 87s. Uh, uh, just uh, to to basically, I, I I would I think you know you can reach out to our our, uh, our local yeah, channel. Yeah, reach out to our uh, DC. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah, write to info at uh, sungroup.net. Uh, so for this parts availability, <clears throat> and I'll, let me just repeat that it is. Info info at the rate sun group s u n g r o u p dot net. Uh, so and that's where you would be able to find more information on that. Uh, and also, also for the, whatever, yeah, also for whatever reason, if you don't um, get in touch with them, then you can just email us on this uh, on india at sure dot com, and we'll get back in touch with you and send you the details that you require. It's very good that you're asking for replacement grills because yes, if they're damaged, that's a bad thing. But it's also quite unhygienic to use the same grill for many years. Everyone should be cleaning the grills uh, quite regularly, at least with like a, a, a like a disinfectant wet wipe. At least before every performance, you should try and make it a standard practice to do that. Good question. Though. The second part of his uh, second question from him was. Uh, what's the way to measure the frequency response on the older 57s and 58s? Just to, I think it is to ensure that uh, they're all working fine. To oh, to measure the frequency response of the mic. And uh, I'm afraid that you won't really be able to do at home, but um, because you require some uh, devices in the middle, basically. Um, typically, I'll just describe how it's done. You you have like a little, um, let's say, I have something here like that. It's like a little uh, tube, and the 57 and the 58 fits very snug into that tube, and you you fire in uh, sweep frequencies from the other side, and uh, then whatever the mic captures can actually be correlated to the original frequency response as per the specification. But it's it's not something you can really do at home because um, um, getting that equipment is not going to be uh, not going to be easy. In fact, it's it's easy to get it. It's quite expensive to get it. But yeah, I mean, generally, I mean, over time, if you feel, I think the best way to know if there's any change is if you have or you have some friends who have like a new uh, 57, 58, or whatever you have, and you want to check it, just do a one-on-one -on -one check. Um, you know, plug them into two channels, um, speak into them, put the same gain and whatever you're doing. And just you know, double check that they sound the same. And if there's any difference, then probably age, for instance, a little bit. But you know, I've I've like used 57s that are some of them like 20 years old, and they still just sound as great as ever. But I think that would cool. be an easier way to just to figure out the frequency response. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, guys who have recently asked a lot of questions in the last five minutes. Uh, we will try to cover as much as possible. We are already three minutes above our scheduled time, but we'll try to address as much as possible. Uh, moving on mind, to the I next. Mind, I, uh, I see 30 so, questions today. Mind. Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, so next question is uh, from Mr. Vinayak Ayer is, uh, which is the best microphone for recording tabla? Uh, uh, would you like to share some insights about uh, recording tabla with three microphones? Um, with re for recording, see the thing is when you get into a recording front, it's a little um, easier because you have a little time to you know play with phase and uh, you know move the microphones around. When it comes to a live situation, and I will always remember one of the most not one of the most famous tabla players in the world that says the tabla needs to be treated as one instrument. So if it's one instrument, you use one microphone on it. And I think for the longest time, if I'm not mistaken, even till today, um, um, I think he still goes with a 58 or he goes with an SM81, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I'm not typically a believer in multiple microphones for a tabla. Um, because I think, again, it, it is a single instrument. It needs to be treated like a single instrument. So if there's a circumstance where you're not getting enough low or you're not getting enough high, then you probably change the microphone, either reposition the microphone 
could be the two options. Um, a case where you might want to use a second is maybe if you want to capture some room ambience. So then you have one really close and then you have one slightly away. And I think where also like this, um, the KSM uh, 313 and 353 uh, do their thing is because they are ribbons, there's a slightly difference in tone between the front and the back. So I'm going to actually demo that for you. So let's not damage this and open it. Give me a second. Okay. So I'm going to talk now, which is into the front of the mic. Hey, 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 check one, two, check one, two. I'm now going to rotate it. Hey, 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 check one, two. So do you hear that low end? Uh, it's not a low end boost. It's just a little less on the high frequency side. Yeah, so this is actually the back of the microphone. Hey, 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 one, two. Hey, 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 one, two. Hey, hey, hey. And while we are at it, because it's a bi-directional mic, if I turn it on the side, you'll get pretty much nothing from me. Hey, 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 one, two. So to your question, I prefer not using too many microphones on a single instrument. I prefer keeping it to just one mic or two at the most in, in case you're looking to capture, um, you know, ambience. But as far as the best, uh, try and use a good, uh, any of these ribbon mics will be really good. You can again try the KSM-8. You can try the SM or the Beta 27 would be ideal, actually, in my opinion, for recording tabla. Cool. Uh, so next question is very interesting. Uh, so it's, Mr. it's from Mr. Rahul Verma. Uh, he's asking for uh, the Indian musicians who prefer to perform along with, uh, like like dancing along with playing the instrument. Uh, it's very difficult to set a, a wired mic with them. Uh, would you prefer using any wireless instrument mic in this type of situation? Sorry, just repeat the first part of that question. So, uh, oh, so for first what is the situation? situation, musicians uh, dancing along with, you know, using the instrument, let's say a right. dhol. Right, 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 right. So for dholes, um, it's yeah very common to use wireless, but it's very important that uh, you use the Beta 98 DS version. That's the one meant for percussion. Uh, and the problem with using the 8C version, which is meant for wind instruments, is that you can distort that cartridge very easily. So you'll hear the distortion and you'll probably think it's the gain is too much or whatnot, but you're actually distorting the cartridge. So the better uh, option is to, um, to uh, not the better option, the correct option is to use the Beta 98. The DS is the correct version to be used. Excellent. Uh, now... It's completely, I mean, pretty much any Indian, band at this point in time that has dholes have them on wireless um, the bands that i work with have and i know many other bands that use dhol wireless and it's it's almost always a beta 98 a ds you just need to be careful of that okay uh, so next question is from uh, mr saurabh day uh, uh, I'll, I'll just verbatim ask the question uh, could you please elaborate the correct approach to choose a microphone for an instrument slash timber -E. Um, basically, it's it's you just uh, see it's very important to you know like the first slide that I put is choose the correct microphone. As in, yes, it's a microphone; it'll capture. But uh, get into the habit of choosing the correct microphone for the correct application. And if that means you need to do A, B, C, D tests with four different microphones, then you need to do it because. Um, it's always beneficial to capture the source correctly rather than to just capture it and then later on, you know, tweak it and make changes and, you know, stuff like that. So um, definitely I would say uh, A, B stuff um, based on, also based on a couple of things, based on what kind of sound you want from the capture of that instrument. Now, let's take a tabla, for example, if you want that tabla sound to be brighter than normal, then you probably, as a simple example, I'll give you, use a Beta 58. If you don't want it to be as bright and you want to tame the brightness, use an SM58. Rather than using an SM58 first, then realizing later, oh, I think I wanted, I should have been a little brighter, and now you add EQ to it. So the general thing should always be to 
record it um, uh, like it is supposed to be recorded or like it is supposed to fit in your final mix and not to just record it with whatever's there and then you know tweak it and uh, you know make those changes later okay. so mostly you, you you can only get that by listening and by you know comparing a versus b versus c versus b that's the only way Hope that answers that question. Uh, next question is from uh, Yama Seth. Uh, are there any genre specific mic preferences, as in mics that work better specifically for pop, rock, or metal? Not really, in my opinion. It's just a mic is a mic, it will capture what is in front of it. So the mic does not know whether you're playing pop or you're playing rock or you're playing metal. It's uh, Generally, you're better off just going with a flat frequency response mic because uh, that gives you the as original or as natural the sound of the actual instrument in front of it. Um, I mean, um, yeah, there's I, I don't I, <clears throat> uh, there are not really you can't really because it's the same microphones that are used for pretty much ends and various applications. Um, a matter of what's in front of it. If it's a poppy sounding, um, you know, guitar, then the mic will pick it up as a poppy sounding guitar. If it's a heavy metal distortion kind of thing, you know, you 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 still you you'll still use the same SM57 and it'll pick up that kind of sound for you. So yeah, you can't really separate the mics too much based on what the genre of the music is. Or at least I wouldn't. Cool. Next question from Mr. Akshay Jagtap is. Uh, if you want to buy a single mic uh, for studio voiceover dubbing and folly sound, uh, which one would that be and uh, would it be too expensive? Uh, not really. If you want one mic to do everything, what did you say? You said single mic for studio voice, dubbing, foley recording. Um, you could start with something like an SM7B. We just remember the SM7B is dynamic and uh, you it's low sensitivity so you have to have a good quality preamp to drive it so that's something you have to be careful of other than that yeah you could go with like you know one of these ribbons the 313 very versatile mic so you can pretty much use them on anything and if you want a condenser type then the sm27 beta 27 uh, ksm32 uh, and in my opinion and I, I don't say that just because now i'm working with show i'm saying that as an engineer I think the KSM32 microphone is probably one of the best microphones for that, for value for money microphone that you can buy, the KSM32. So I would suggest a KSM32 for, uh, you know, vocal recording, vocal dubbing, Foley sound, um, absolutely, KSM32 all the way. Great. So Mr. Jaktap has his answer, I guess. Uh, a lot of, um, I think I have a dozen more questions. Most of them look very interesting. So uh, I guess you know, people on, on, on the session are, are patient enough to, uh, yeah. to hear our responses. Next question from uh, Mr. Abhishek Deshpande is, can you tell us a bit more about ribbon mics and the build of it? Uh, I've heard that ribbon mics are too sensitive and needs very uh, good preamps to run. Yeah, um, so a ribbon is basically, it looks like, so if you take a piece of tin foil that you uh, like have in the kitchen and you cut a thin strip and you, you know, um, uh, I would say corrugate it. So where it becomes like a zigzag thing like that, that's basically what the ribbon looks like. Now, the, the issue is that it is very easy to damage that ribbon because it is actually as thin as a foil. It's actually thinner than that. So if you damage it, it's destroyed. You basically have to get yourself a new mic. Now, where these mics are different as ribbon technology uh, is the material of that ribbon. It's a material called rosolite. And that material can take a lot of bashing as far as sound pressure level goes. It's as sensitive as, you know, standard ribbon microphones, but with the big difference that you can smash a lot of power uh, into the microphone. That's where these ribbon microphones, uh, the, specifically the uh, 313 and the 353, um, you can put under extreme conditions, be it like, you know, bass guitar cabinet, uh, kick drum, which you would not dream of putting any other ribbon microphone um, uh, in front of, uh, impossible. Um, so I hope that answers the first part of your question. And as far as preamps, yes. You do require a good quality preamp to run them because they are all low sensitivity. 
So at the moment, if I show you, I'm using a smallish, like a Focusrite little sound card, but my gain is nearly maxed out. So I'm on, uh, how much is this? I'm on almost 80% um, gain on this. So, and that's because the Focusrite, or at least this preamp does not drive it as hard, but if you have a good quality preamp. Um, in fact, one of the things that does drive it very well is, so in the next webinar that I do, I'm doing a thing on these computer um, microphones that connect straight to your computer, the motif range. And there's a little sound card that's made called the MVI. And that actually drives these uh, ribbon microphones and the SM7B, in fact, very well. Um, if you all are ever on online and you all check out um, uh, there's a, a counterpart of ours in Dubai that does a lot of webinars. So he uses an SM7B along with this MVI interface. And uh, you require a good quality preamp to drive it. That's that's important, basically. Okay, one sentence answer for this question from Mr. Vinayak Ayer. Mics for Indian percussions like Dolak and Kanjiri? Kanjira? Um, SM58, SM57, Beta57, Beta58. Uh, that's if you're doing uh, live, if you're in the studio, uh, SM27, Beta27, KSM32, uh, Kanjira, you could actually even try on an SM81, possibly. Yep. So cool. these would be the options, various options. Okay, uh, coming to the next uh, question, uh, is SM58 a good option for Tabla? It's probably the most standard tabla microphone in the world. Uh, I haven't seen a tabla in India with anything other than SM58, Beta 58 sometimes, and uh, SM81. It's become pretty standard uh, in a live live scenario. Again, if you're in the studio, try and use something a little more sensitive like a you know KSM32, Beta 27, SM27 if you're in the studio, but live SM58, uh, beta 81, uh, difficult to beat these two choices. Good. <clears throat> Next question is uh, from Mr. Pintu. Uh, I hope uh, we get to understand this question correctly. Uh, he's asking, how do we get the perfect match pair microphones when we are using two mics for a single purpose? So see, the thing about matched pair is it it's a little more important maybe in a studio uh, scenario but um, firstly how they I'll run, tell you how they quickly make match pair it's basically made from the same sheet of components so if you have like a tray of uh, let's say resistors um, you have resistor one and then resistor two so it's basically made from the same batch of material it's made in the same order so the the value differences the tolerances will be very very close, uh, there won't be much difference. Now, when you come to using a matched pair in an actual application, what's important is, okay, you have a matched pair, but what other things are matched? Is the actual distance from the instrument matched? Maybe. Is the environment where you're putting it matched, as in the mic to the left, maybe closer to the wall, the mic to the right might not be closer to the wall. You know, situations like that. So if you're using a matched pair, it matters the application that you're actually using it for. Um, um, that's basically how they make it, and that's where you'll pretty much use it. I don't see you using a matched pair too much in live sound, but you definitely see using a matched pair in, um, in what do you call it, in, in studio. That It's quite common there. But again, you have to keep in mind how they're positioned, where they're positioned with respect to the instrument, close to a wall, how close to the floor, how close to the ceiling, you know, everything about how you position those mics also needs to be matched to get the best uh, effect out of using the matched pair. Okay. <clears throat> Next question from AVL Marketing is, most of the beta models are 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz, uh, and all are referred for snares. So what's the selection criteria in between these beta mics? Um, say for example, a uh, beta 57. Uh, yes, you can replace it with a beta 98. Now, why would you replace it with a beta 98? Maybe you don't have enough place to fit a beta 57. Think of a large uh, rock metal drum kit which have toms all over and the snares in the center. It's impossible to fit a beta, uh, any, forget a beta 57, even a, in a standard 57. 
So there's where, you know, the clamp that comes with it is an A56D clamp. And how that works is, um, I wonder if I have the clamp here somewhere. Um, anyway, how it works is basically you don't connect it to the top of the snare, you connect it to the bottom of the snare. And it's just the, you know, the mic then comes up and it's just that much of a cartridge which comes on the snare. So that's where you'd probably use a beta, the beta 98 instead of the, instead of the, um, beta, you know, 57. Um, so it's, it's again, it can be used on various things because you might want different tonality from, you know, the snare drum. And as you might know, if you're, a, if you're a musician or if musicians are here, all snare drums have different sounds. So, you know, you can have a dull snare drum, you can have a, you know, a loud beefy snare drum. So it's, I mean, it's, it's, just depends on what kind of sound signature or character that you want to capture from the from the source and that's why it mentions that you can use it on um, all of them can be used on snares it just depends on you to try them and see what works best uh, for you okay i hope that answers next the question, question. <laughs> yep hope so uh, it's the next question from mr karan gulab is uh, how can we make right placement of two condenser mic uh, for one instrument without phasing. Two condenser mic without phasing, that is the problem. You cannot do that. It's very difficult. Unless you listen to them and move them front and back, slightly side to side, you cannot. But as a rule, if you're putting two microphones side by side, you need to have at least three feet of distance between them for them to not phase at all. And that's the reason you do not put two mics on a tabla. Because the 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 mic on the buyer and the mic on the charty are phasing with each other and um, that's just what that's just the effect of having these two mics in close proximity that's what it does so there's no option other than moving them front or back slightly side to side or adding a little delay from the console it's um, virtually impossible to take care of phase um, phase mismatch cool the next question from Mr. Prashar Budhwarkar is, for live applications, is it wise to use a mic preamp before the console? I if I answer that, understand that question because, oh, you're saying a mic preamp going into the console preamp? If that's the question, it's not ideal because then you're going preamp into preamp. Um, ideally, if you go, um, if you make use of the preamp, then you ideally want to go, you want to bypass the console preamp. So if there's a way to bring, to come line into the console, then that's what you should be doing. Um, it's not a great practice to go preamp into preamp. Based. Cool. Uh, so next question uh, is from Mr. Nathan Dimla, uh, which is the best soft speech microphone for a distance of 12 inch from the source in live environment. Um, I've been using the, um, if you're talking about speech or if you're talking about singing, I've been using the uh, KSM 8 now for quite a while. Um, and I can tell you that uh, there's sometimes where the mic is held that far back and sometimes even that far back and it uh, it seems to pick up the voice perfectly fine. So, um, I, ideally in this circumstance, I would not recommend a condenser microphone. I would recommend a dynamic microphone. So the 58, a beta 58, uh, KSM 8 would be the choices to go for. Anything soft, uh, preferably, and you're struggling with gain before feedback, uh, preferably go for a dynamic, do not choose a, a condenser. Okay, so let me look at. Uh, thank you for all the nice comments, guys. Uh, for this video, just so that you know, a lot of people oh, like the live you. demos and the extra, oh, thank extra you very information. Much. Yeah. Uh, okay, so one interesting question from Mr. Daswani again is Is the SM58 50 year edition with silver handle available in India to purchase? <laughs> Wait. Um... You'll have, we'll have to check with, in fact, with uh, Sun Group yeah. because uh, if, I'm not sure if they have stock of it, but um, it's possible to get it's uh, gettable. So you'll have to check with Sun yeah. Group again. You can email them or uh, either send us an email on uh, India at Shaw.com and we'll um, we'll figure that out for you. 
Yeah. Uh, so coming to the next, uh, just a, uh, one one comment I wanted to make. So some people who are checking whether there's a certification <clears throat> for this webinar. <clears throat> so this is basically a, a knowledge sharing session <clears throat> purely, but we do have certification courses available on the website that uh, you see on the screen. Uh, that's our South Asia Talent LMS portal. So once you go uh, log into the courses, uh, and and complete those courses, you do get uh, certification certificates from Sure. So so please go log in, sign up, and then you know you you. Uh, there's there's one specifically on there's one specifically on Wired microphones. So you could probably do that. I think it's called the Wired Master. So that has basically everything from how the mics actually work, how you make polar patterns in the design of the mic. So it's a pretty intense uh, course. I think that one is a good one to do. So uh, the next question from Mr. Aniket Hiranjul is when recording drum kit, which mic can be used to capture room sound? ASM32, hands down, uh, there is very few mics that come close to that. ASM32, uh, also the Beta 181 with the uh, omnidirectional capsule. Uh, you want to try and use a mic that has either omni or has a very wide cardioid pattern you don't want a mic that is too directional so the beta 181 with the omnidirectional capsule uh, ksm 32 ksm 44 would be my picks for drum uh, for drum uh, for drum overheads and for drum room mic also absolutely uh, and that's not to say you could not use one of these ribbons as well for uh, room mics, um, it would also work really uh, pretty well. The the reason being that the you know like I mentioned, so if um, if I if I turn this mic around, hey hey, you see it sounds a little dull, and the good thing with that is then it starts to reject a lot of the harsh symbols and uh, you know stuff like that. So from that point of view, a ribbon, one of these turned in the reverse would make more sense. And then you also have the option in case you're finding it too dull, uh, you want it brighter, you can flip it back around and now it's, um, now you can capture a little more highs. Uh, that would be my, my option. So I think that's, uh, that's it on the question side. I think I have been able to cover most of them. Uh, so, uh, guys, if if we have somehow missed your questions, because there were, there were a lot of them, uh, and and then we kind of overshot almost half an hour uh, from know, our schedule time. So, uh, so if 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 you still have any questions, if you have not been able to cover it somehow, if you have, if you come up with questions later, uh, please write to us at uh, india at sure dot com. Uh, if you are interested in some more webinars, uh, which we uh, you know which you cover in English from our corporate office, there are. Uh, there is a link to that, uh, Fali. If you have it in the next uh, slide, uh, so you it's can you can you can basically screen. just just Google it's Sure webinars. Yeah. So just Google uh, you know, Sure webinars. Uh, you would be able to enjoy those sessions as well. Uh, learn those, and we would also. I mean, I've, I'm I'm seeing this was like a super engaging session for us. So I'm seeing a lot of interest. Uh, we would definitely. There is a Fali for your information. There is a request for a session on cordless uh, mics as well. Uh, oh, so would, we'll definitely consider that. Yeah. So thank you so much for your time, guys. Uh, uh, I'm 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 pretty sure this was uh, this was a great session for you. A lot of learning. I learned a lot from this. Uh, so thank you so much again. Uh, take care. Uh, you know, uh, uh, and 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 have a good night. Uh, see you all soon. Thank you. You guys. Thank you very much. See you soon. Stay safe.